Now we shall study about pi bond formation in the case of octahedral complexes that is the molecular orbital theory of pi bond formation in octahedral complexes. So we had studied the sigma bond formation in the similar way the pi bond formation is also taking place in the case of octahedral complexes and here uh, the p by p pi orbitals are provided by the six uh, ligands in the case of octahedral complexes and we see here that each ligand is providing two p pi orbitals and those two p pi orbitals are mutually perpendicular to each other and they are together perpendicular to the sigma plane or to the orbitals that is p sigma orbitals and therefore each ligand is providing two p pi orbitals and in total there will be a contribution of 12 p pi orbitals from the six ligands. Now uh, here we can consider the two cases. In one case these p pi orbitals can be vacant p pi orbitals and in the other case they are of filled kind. So we can say that p pi filled orbitals. Now the vacant orbitals are usually given by the ligands such as the cyanide or the Cn minus and we can quote another example for the vacant uh, so the filled p pi orbitals such as the chloride or the Cl minus. Now those differences or the differences these two ligands make in the formation of pi bonding and al can also be studied in the case of molecular orbital theory. Now we shall move on to the symmetries which are required for the pi bond formation in the case of octahedral complexes. And again from the group theory it is said that the better suited the symmetries for the pi bond formation are T1G, T2G and T1U and T2U symmetries. Now it is well said that the T1G and T2U symmetries are not found in the case of metal orbitals. And when we consider the uh, another symmetry that is T1U and that is better suited for the sigma bond or the sigma bond formation in the octahedral complexes. And therefore, we are just left with the T2G symmetry, hence the T2G symmetry is considered in the case of metal orbital for the pi bond formation. However, the ligand provides all these four symmetries that is T1U, T2U, T1G and T2G. Therefore, if only the T2G is taking part in the pi bond formation, we can say that in the part of atomic orbitals of the ligands, we can have T1U and then T2U as well as T1G as the non-bonding molecular orbitals and that can be dealt little later in this discussion. Now, here the T2G orbitals will be representing in case of metals 3D orbitals and that is DXY, DY, and DZX. Therefore, atomic orbitals of T2G symmetries are undergoing the additive overlapping words, the T2G symmetry or the T2G symmetry corresponding to the ligand P pi combinations. So therefore, these two overlapping will give us or gives uh, two uh, molecular orbitals, one as T2G bonding, other one as T2G anti-bonding molecular orbitals. Now, when we have this differentiation between the sigma and the pi bond formation, and there will be a total involvement of metal symmetries starting from A1G to T1U and then AG and T2G if we combine sigma and pi bond formations. Therefore, these two combinations of sigma and pi are better suited to explain why ligands such as Cl minus gives high spin complexes and why the ligands such as Cn minus, Cn uh, cyano or the Cn minus gives uh, the uh, low spin complexes. Now, uh, we shall explain why these differences are seen in the case of uh, vacant as well as the filled p pi orbitals. First, let us consider uh, the filled p pi orbitals or the ligands having filled p pi orbitals. Now, example is furnished by the chloroligands or the chloride we can consider. So, in the case of chloride, uh, each electron, each ligand is providing uh, a total of four pi electrons uh, to the octahedral complexes because each ligand gives uh, so a total of two uh, ligands, uh, two p pi orbitals, and therefore four electrons. Hence, we consider like this, and we will be having a total of thirty-six electrons from uh, sigma as well as the uh, pi electron, the pi uh, bonding orbitals. Therefore, this thirty-six electrons can be filled up to uh, the, um, in the case of uh, Cl minus, it can be filled up to uh, the non-bonding molecular orbitals of ligand that is T1U, T2U and T1G. Therefore, in the next, uh, the difference between the T2G star and the AG star, if we consider, it could be taken as the crystal phase splitting and it is a smaller gap, T2G star to AG star. Now, this is a crystal phase splitting in the case of the ligand that is Cl minus chloro. So, therefore, 
uh, when we say that the crystal free splitting gap is very small in this case, hence uh, they are providing uh, the elect or they are providing the chance for the electron to get jammed into the higher energy level and therefore pairing, an pairing energy is more than that of uh, the crystal field splitting. So most of the electrons prefer to move on to um, the higher energy level once the Huns rule is fulfilled. So therefore uh, the Cl- minus prefers to give uh, high spin complexes where there will be more number of unpaired electrons present. Now, when it comes to the p pi filled orbital such as uh, Cn minus or the cyano ligands, so we can say that they are providing vacant p pi orbitals. Now, in the case of Cn minus or the cyano ligands, uh, only the 12 electrons are contributed from sigma since p pi orbitals are vacant, 0 electrons from the p pi orbitals. And hence, these two, uh, these 12 electrons can be just filled up to Eg bonding molecular orbital. So therefore, we can say that uh, crystal field splitting in the case of uh, cyano ligand or the Cn minus ligand is that it is from T2G to Eg star, from T2G bonding molecular orbital to Eg anti bonding molecular. It's a larger gap, and therefore, uh, it is not sufficient. Uh, the energy is not sufficient for an electron to jam from lower bonding to the higher anti bonding molecular orbital. Or we can say that most of the electrons prefer to get uh, paired up in the lower energy state itself. Therefore, the electrons are paired here and hence we can say the pairing energy is lesser than the crystal field splitting. Therefore, because of the higher gap, most of the electrons are in the paired state. Hence, we can say that these ligands are providing only uh, the low spin complexes and they are called as the strong ligands and hence the complexes formed from they are called as the strong field complexes. And in case of Cl minus of the chloro ligands, it is said that Cl being a weak ligand, it gives the high spin complex and it is also said that the complexes formed from them are the weak complexes and hence it concludes that uh, pi bonding theory or the molecular orbital theory in the case of pi bonding in octahedral complexes can explain why ligands such as the Cl or some other halo ligands are providing or giving high spin complexes and the ligands which are stronger are provide why they are providing uh, the low spin complexes and it concludes the pi bonding theory in the case of octahedral complexes. Thank you.